Six Famous Co-Stars Who Are Real-Life Best Friends Written by Isabella Brownlee She's my homie. Can you- Can you- <laughs> Here are six beloved on-screen duos that surpass the camera and continue their friendship in real life. With on-screen best friend duos like Cher and Dion from Clueless, or Driss and Felipe from The Untouchables, Audiences adore friendships that remind them of their experiences filled with adventures, drama, romance, thrills, or action. These fictional characters are so close to our hearts that it crushes us to find out that those who played these characters are in fact not best friends in real life. This takes away from the on-screen magic of partnership and the act of always being there for each other. However, in filmmaking some actors and actresses continue this friendship for years upon years. There is a warmth that sparks within us when we see on-screen characters together in real life, enjoying each other's company and being there for each other, no matter what. We, I, I don't like co-sleeping with anyone, it's a thing. I don't know why, but it's just my thing. But, but this one. You spoon with poo, poo Oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> Number one, Kate Winslet and Leonardo DiCaprio. You jump, I jump, remember? Why did you do that, why? You jump, I jump, right? For 23 years and counting, the beloved Jack Dawson and Rose DeWitt Bucator duo have been inseparable. Kate Winslet and Leonardo DiCaprio met on set for James Cameron's 1997 award-winning Titanic, based on the real-life event of the RMS Titanic sinking in 1912. You don't want to do this. As said by DiCaprio in an interview with Entertainment Tonight for Titanic about co-star Winslet, she's such a terrific person in general that our chemistry sort of just naturally happened, I think, on screen. We just like each other as people. As far as doing the love scene, though, we laughed about it a lot. Kate and I had such a, she's such a terrific person, just like each other as, as yeah. people. Still to this day, Winslet remarks about how the two of them recall lines from Titanic. In an interview with Glamour, she reveals that the duo have not forgotten their past work together, but instead celebrate it with tiny remarks and inside jokes. We're very, very close, and sometimes we do quote the odd Titanic line back and forth to each other, because only we can, and we find it really funny. Well done, Leo. I'm so happy I can stand here and tell you how much I love you, and how much I've loved you for 13 years. <laughs> In 2008, the duo worked with each other again for Sam Mendes' Revolutionary Road, where Winslet and DiCaprio portray a couple in the mid-1950s who are battling with personal problems while raising their two children. You are an empty, empty, hollow shell of a woman! In an interview with E.T. for Revolutionary Road, DiCaprio speaks about how the two had been looking for opportunities to work together. We'd been actively looking for projects to do together because I feel like she's just the best actress of her generation. But we'd, we'd actively been looking for uh, projects to do together just because, you know, I feel like she's just the, the best actress of her generation. With a shift in relationship dynamics instead of Titanic, the pair challenges each other enough to bring out pure, impactful, compelling, and emotional acting. Don't have to. But I have the backbone not to run away from my responsibilities. Who made these rules anyway? Unlike other friendship duos on this list, Winslet and DiCaprio keep their friendship on the down low, as most of their sightings are at award shows. One of the most compelling moments between the two occurred at the 2016 Oscars, where DiCaprio won his first Academy Award for Best Actor for his lead role in Alejandro G. Inaratu's The Revenant. The safe thing to do is track a new course back up online. While DiCaprio gives his thoughtful acceptance speech about climate change, Winslet watches in awe of her longtime friend. The emotion and decades of friendship are all evident on Winslet's face as she stares in awe of her former co-star. People out there whose voices have been drowned out by the politics of greed, I thank you all for this amazing award tonight. Let us not take this planet for granted. 
While the world does not get casual Instagram posts of Jack and Rose, it is heartwarming to see a real life form of Rose is living a beautiful life alongside a best friend version of Jack. You know, he, he, he gave the best performance he's ever given in his life in playing Frank Wheeler. Thank you, Kay. Number two, Sophie Turner and Maisie Williams. Hashtag Mophie. Are you going to say your name first or last? You can say your name first. Oh yeah, because we want the big reveal to happen. <laughs> When Sophie Turner was 13 and Maisie Williams was 12, the two met each other on the set of the widely acclaimed Game of Thrones. Playing Stark sisters, the two became inseparable for eight years of filming, quickly becoming real-life sisters of their own. In an interview with Rolling Stone, Turner and Williams had this to say about each other. I get why they do chemistry reads, because when it's right, it's right. Like, we're best friends. And they could see that all those years ago. And it must have been real magic watching these two girls have the best time together, says Williams. We're a nightmare to work with. If you're working with your best friend, you'll never get any work done. Ever. Anytime we try to be serious about anything, it's just the hardest thing in the world. I think they really regretted putting us in scenes together. It was difficult, says Turner. She and I have gone through some real ups and downs in our lives, but like seeing Maisie today and seeing what a strong woman she is, like, that's when I feel the proudest of her. It is apparent throughout any interview or social media interaction that this duo absolutely and completely loves the other. Having grown up together under the same circumstances of the media constantly breathing down their necks, the two were lucky enough to have someone to lean on who was going through the same thing. In a Vogue Paris video, Turner enthusiastically speaks upon Williams and their deep relationship as lifelong friends. My best friend Maisie, she and I have a very intense friendship, a friendship that I haven't had with any of my other girlfriends before. So my best friend Maisie, who's on Game of Thrones yes. with me, who plays Arya, she and I have a very, like, intense friendship. Mm. Social media has even gone as far to make a name for the duo, Mofi, because it is without a doubt that the two are inseparable. Their relationship is more than a friendship, and is much more a sisterhood between two people who found each other in the strangest of circumstances. On The Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon, Williams reveals her happiness having found someone like her in a life moment of weakness. Miss Sophie Turner, my best friend indeed. It's been so nice having someone of a similar age and gender to go through this crazy life together because it is really strange growing up in front of the public to have someone in the darkest times that you can call that knows exactly what you're going through just keeps you sane. But what do you say to your Sophie best friend? Tur you're my best friend indeed, is Sophie that, Turner. How cool is that? Give her a hand. Absolutely. Yeah. Number three, Drew Barrymore and Cameron Diaz. We're like more than best friends. She's my sister. I call each other poo poo. I call her poo poo. She's oh. in my phone poo poo. Yeah. Martial arts, tech skills, and sex appeal. Drew Barrymore and Cameron Diaz have it all. They have continued their female empowering friendship even after the 2000 release of McGee's Charlie's Angels. For over 30 years, this duo has surpassed Hollywood drama and remains a wholesome, empowering, thriving, and endearing friendship. In an interview with Entertainment Tonight, Barrymore speaks upon her former co-star and their bond beyond friendship, more so as sisters. We're like more than best friends. She's my sister. We have much more of that kind of relationship. We're very honest with each other. We push each other. And we've had the majority of our lives spent side by side, really going through what real life is, which is an everyday high and low. And we just have each other's backs. Um, I can't wait to just grow old with you and to experience the rest of our life together. The duo's mission in life is very similar as they promote self-love and female empowerment across their social media. With bare faces and real smiles, the two are not shy to show self-love and expression. As said by Barrymore in an Instagram selfie alongside Diaz, hashtag sisters, getting out of your house with your girlfriend and being a whole person with your sister. Remember to spend a moment with the ones you love in your busy life. She has made me feel beyond beautiful. Always has. Always will. Hashtag, thank God for your friends. They rejuvenate and confirm everything. Drew Barrymore has admitted that her nickname for Diaz is Auntie Poo Poo, but the reason as to why has remained a secret between the two. It is heartwarming to see that the two have cutesy inside jokes with each other, even when they might be classified as too old for those young friendship behaviors. In an interview with Andy Cohen, Diaz kindly speaks upon her relationship with soul sister Barrymore. We've been in this industry for a really long time together, and that's a feat. To have people that you've known for that long, those are real relationships. It's real friendships. We've gone through a lot in life together, 
Through all that the media throws at the famous duo, they have stuck together and grown up against all odds. And I know everything about you and I love you so much and you always make me want to be a better person. Number four, Michelle Williams and Busy Phillips. We're not going to break up. <laughs> and uh, and when she's we in like town, to to I take place. her to John and Benny's here in Los Angeles. It's our favorite pizza place. Michelle Williams and Busy Phillips met in the 90s on the set of 1998 to 2003's teen drama Dawson's Creek and have been best friends since. As a quiet and reserved person, Michelle Williams prefers to keep her private life private. So when Heath Ledger, the father of her daughter, passed away from a drug overdose, anyone would need someone to lean on for support during such a difficult time. As said by Phillips for The Cut, where she speaks about the loss of Ledger and supporting her best friend, I've never talked about it. I've never shared it because I'm hyper-protective of Williams and her daughter. But I also think, I think it's okay. Everyone's allowed to have their own feelings about something that happens. Certain people in the public feel protective. While Williams chooses to stay reserved, the two are constantly seen together at award shows or out and about in the town, enjoying each other's company. In an interview with Entertainment Weekly, Williams had this to say about meeting co-star and best friend Phillips for the first time. When I met her, she was the coolest girl I had ever seen. She had a nose ring. She wore her hair in braids. She wore overalls. And she had this attitude like, I know who I am and don't cross my line. I just thought, I want to be this person when I grow up. She was my first real friend I ever had. As a recurring theme, it seems that these powerful friendships are marked as the first real friendships that support each other under the media's frightening and intimidating eye. As said by Phillips regarding the internal emotional connection with Williams, it was like, you know how people say love at first sight? We had that thing. We had that friend connection. It was just an immediate, of course we were drinking wine and smoking cigarettes and getting in bar fights. We just had an immediate love for each other that continued over the years. With the public eye focused on the duo's friendship, some have come to speculate on whether there is more than a platonic relationship between Williams and Phillips. In an interview with The Advocate, Phillips speaks upon the accusations of her relationship with Williams. I get why people would say that about us. It does seem plausible. I believe sexuality is fluid, and women can have a deep love and affection for other women. My friendship with Michelle has stood the test of time, and we've been together through many different versions of our lives. I love her deeply, as I love almost anyone, but we don't do it. This famous duo has been through it all together and continuously supports each other against all odds. With truth, love, or a shoulder to lean on, Williams and Phillips is the prime example of friendship that anyone would be lucky enough to have. In an interview with Bravo's Personal Space, Phillips reveals that her relationship with Williams is all love and they are internally invested in one another. You know, people just love two famous people who find each other. At least ours, you know, we're not gonna like break up. So you can really invest in this relationship. We're not gonna break up. We like we weirdly don't really dance. I'm trying to think of the last no, time we, we like danced sit. together. No, we just sit and bop. <laughs> okay. We oh yeah, bop. the bop. Number five, Chris Evans and Scarlett Johansson. Hashtag Romanagers. You're so good. I was so, so sweet. Well, you're so so good. It's like my only actor friend that actually came to see the play. <laughs> <laughs> While you might know Chris Evans and Scarlett Johansson as Steve Rogers, aka Captain America, and Natasha Romanoff, aka Black Widow, members of the Avengers, the two became best friends long before they teamed up to save the world. The two met on the set of Brian Robbins' 2004 teen heist comedy, The Perfect Score. Alright, I'll <laughs> see you on Tuesday. I will see you Tuesday. From then on, the two would form a 10-year friendship and star side by side in a handful of films. In 2007, Evans and Johansson start alongside each other for the second time in Shari Springer Berman and Robert Pulsini's romantic comedy, The Nanny Diaries. The romantic side between the two has remained platonic throughout the years, even if their fictional characters do otherwise. In an interview with Access Hollywood, Johansson had this to say about kissing co-star Evans. Any excuse to get close to Chris Evans is delightful. At this point, we're old and jaded, so it's like, bring him on, no big deal. Pop in the Tic Tacs, get the camera rolling. You know, I've known him for 10 years, you know, it's like my brother in some ways. Right. As Captain America and Black Widow, the two start alongside each other in numerous MCU films, such as Captain America the Winter Soldier, Captain America Civil War, The Avengers, Avengers Age of Ultron, Avengers Infinity War, and Avengers Endgame. In an interview with LA Times, Johansson shared her thoughts about working alongside her best friend Evans. We work well together, I think, and admire one another as actors. 
We're used to being able to throw the ball back and forth because we've done that in the past in other films that we've done. We're also older actors now and more comfortable taking our time. You can wait for the emotions to come and let the moments happen. It's apparent that the two work incredibly well together, and they do not let the media nor their fictional characters' emotions get in the way of their friendship. With interview after interview together, the two act like siblings who look after each other with continuous, playful banter. In an interview with Ellen, Chris Evans surprises, or more specifically, scares Scarlett Johansson as she's speaking about how well she knows him from working with him for so long. Anything that he's gonna do. Go out! <laughs> There's an abundance of moments caught on camera between them as their sibling relationship flows out from the pair. Number six, James Franco and Seth Rogen. And he's just a great friend and makes good pie. Oh, although I did make Seth Rogen a pie and he loved it. James Franco and Seth Rogen began their comedic empowered friendship on the 1999 teen comedy drama show, Freaks and Geeks. Sadly, the show ended after the first season, but that did not stop them from sticking together. In 2007, the hilarious duo found each other again in Judd Apatow's Knocked Up, with Rogen in the lead role and Franco only making a cameo appearance. Like I said, I, uh, I really wasn't into him, but now that I did the research, I think they're pretty amazing. <gasps> A year later, the pair would release one of, if not their best, duo film, Pineapple Express, filled with romance, drugs, and guns. <coughs> Other films including the comedic duo include The Green Hornet, This Is The End, The Interview, The Sound and the Fury, The Night Before, Sausage Party, and most recently, the disaster artist. Play by me. He has it all. Good luck. Many friends. And also, maybe Johnny is vampire. We'll see. Together for two decades, Franco and Rogan's friendship extends beyond themselves and has taken a presence of an incredibly wholesome bond that follows itself into the film industry. One of their most popular parodies was their take on Kanye West's Bound 2. The pair hold on to each other while riding a motorcycle in a comedic parody of West's version alongside Kim Kardashian. I could try to put into words how legendary Bound 3, Franco and Rogan's rename for their parody is, but it's probably just better for you to see it yourself. As said by Rogan for IndieWire, speaking about working with Franco and how they've become better people having learned from one another, the lesson that I learned was the idea that you think you're personally great, especially the ones where your instinct is like, I shouldn't do that, nobody wants to hear that. That could make me look bad. That could be too crazy. Those are probably the best ideas. Franco helped me learn that. And it's helped me be happier with my work and myself in general. And he's just a great friend and makes good pie. While issues occur in each other's lives, the two are quick to support each other. Over the years, the two have learned from each other and have created comedy gold and continue to. Bam.